Hey guys, Disco here, and today I'll be reacting to update to the Dead by Daylight update 7.5.0, um, which um, is the update that I can have that I came out with Alan Lake. Um, this is my second time recording this video. The first time had some problems, so I wanted to uh, redo it. I also want to mention before I get, get into this that there will be some gameplay videos coming out soon. I know I've been doing a lot of reaction, reaction videos and they haven't been doing the best, which is understandable. But um, I do actually have an idea for a gameplay video, so... Stay tuned for that, but anyway, so yeah, so this release on January 30th, it'll, it's like February something by the time this comes out, my reaction, uh, the, the DLC released the same day, the home open the next day, anyways, features, the field of view settings, there's a new setting, there's a new setting option, DVD, players don't have the ability to adjust their FOV or field of view, as a slider in the systems menu, this allows players with the first person camera killer, or was the accession of the good guy, aka Chucky, to adjust their field of view, reducing motion sickness and other accessibility issues, this feature is initially in the beta tab, while we allow for feral testing, I don't, for me personally, I've never really noticed a difference with FOV. Um, I get it can be helpful, but I've never noticed. I personally have never really noticed a difference. So maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't know. But for those of you who actually do get uh, see the difference with FOV, I'm pretty happy for you. I know that's take is bad. I'm just saying that for me personally, I know, but for me personally, I don't notice the increase. Um, at least with Dead by Daylight, I, I don't notice an FOV increase. Uh, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's just how I play the, maybe it's just how my brain works or something, or how I play the game, I don't know. Uh, so the FOV perk updates, because there was two FOV perks, obviously been updated because of the slider. So Shadowborn got completely reworked. So now it's when blinded by any means, you gain a 60, 10% haste as back for 10 seconds new functionality. I don't think a whole lot of people particularly care for the Shadowborn change, which is fair, but nobody really cared for that perk to begin with, so... Yeah... <laughs> Uh, monitoring abuse, which is one to chase for terrorists is increased by 8 meters, otherwise for terrorists is decreased by 8 meters, FOV class is removed. So it's, yeah, so it's the exact same, but it also increased your FOV before, but now it doesn't. I mean, they're not terrible perk changes, especially since monitoring abuse isn't really good. They just removed the thing that it did. Uh, the generator system update, which is still very confusing, um, to me, I fairly understand it, but it is a very big change, and it's a pretty confusing one. Uh, the free giant strategy, identifying the closest free giants and defending all them, has become very strong, especially on certain killers. This can lead to very long games of frustration. To help prevent such situations, the following now applies. Each generator can only suffer eight regression events maximum after the max has been reached. On a generator, that generator can no longer be regressed by the killer, including kicks, add-ons, and perks related regressions. So, ba yeah, so basically, you can only mess with the gen eight times as the killer. If a survivor screws up a skill check, that'll still regress the gen and whatnot. Over regression is okay by increasing the effects after three more regression events. So basically, after you hit this gen three times, you'll start to hear a noise that gets louder and louder to indicate where it's at. Uh, survivors failing skill check story guess generators normally do not count as regression events. Killer kick regression is increased from 2.5% to 5% so to get less regression. Um, since you can't regress the generator as much, you now 
Or you guess more. Oh, my kicking out. Are you good before? Gen tapping is no longer possible. The software generator from regressing start must repair 5% of the generator of the generator and regression is not occur while repairs are in progress. It's a pretty uh, confusing change. It's huge though, because it completely changes how the game works. I still don't really know. Um I still I haven't played any matches yet since Elm Lake has been out because as much as I want to, I'm just um I've been super busy and very out of it, so I just haven't bothered to. Very emotional. No. Perks affected. Hex ruin. All generators are affected by hex ruin. While generator is not being repaired by a survivor, will immediately and automatically regress. Repair progress at fifty percent, seventy five percent to up to one hundred percent of the. Normal regression speed no longer deactivates when the survivor is killed, which kind of sucks. But that no one goes away. But when you do that, but it's fine. Surge and scourge hook. Uh, pain resonance. This not. I don't know why they say scur surge and scourge hook, and then they have pain resonance. I like now it was the scourge hook because pain resonance is the only scourge hook that affects generators. Because, um, for the rages, for your information, and I love that, and I kind of love that about Fonts of Rage. It's an information one, and then pinheads. Which I don't even know, I can't even think of the name of it right now because it's pretty sure it does a lot. Wayfang. Chains of Hate, maybe, or so, I don't remember. Whatever the name of Pinhead Scourge Hook is, it like applies um, status effects to the survivor that like kind of hinder them and make them worse at some at things. So I don't know why they didn't just say surge and, surge and scourge hook pain resonance. And so they said surge and scourge hook and then you, and then, and the norm, and then in the text of, um, what, you know, the change, but before you get to the change, it says pain resonance. I don't understand that. Uh, does not create a lot, of, does not create a lot of noise notification that part is lost on the generator. Oppression only caused a regression event on the generator that was kicked. Overcharge only the... <laughs> Initiating kick counts as a regression event, so if the survivor fails the really difficult skill check, then that doesn't count as a regression event, so that will actually, you know, so that won't make you lose progress on your eight regression events. Content re enabled the Nord Hide perk. I still don't know why Nord the Hide was disabled. If you guys know, please let me know in the comment section below. But I know it was disabled. Uh, re enabled the Night Killer. From my understanding, Night was disabled because of a bug where he could summon all of his guards, where he could send out all of his guards at once, which sounds absolutely terrifying to go up against the Cenobite, the Assassin, the Jailer and the knight all at once instead of just either the knight by himself or the knight and one of those you know one of the other one free but no like all four of them at once that sounds absolutely terrifying uh do survivor oh wait wait oh 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 wait who gets excited over something they don't know and understand. Like, that's kind of weird. Um, I'm happy he's here. Um, especially for everybody who knows and loves Alan Wake. Um, I did get a somewhat negative comment on my re initial reaction to his, and the, to the first Alan Wake, that, you know, trailer of him being in the Vidale. And, um, yeah, that... I've always said that my reaction videos to Alan Wake are the worst on YouTube, but, you know, 
Uh, so I'm not sure why that person felt the need to leave a comment because I said right at the beginning of the video that I had no idea who it was. So expect not a great reaction, but whatever. Uh, Champion of Light, which is by far his most OP perk. Um, Orange was the only person I can think of that was kind of confused by that a little bit because he thought all the perks are super good. Well, I think all the perks are super good. I immediately knew Champion of Light was broken when I read them. So take that. Take the information as you will. Um, so Champion of Light is while you are holding a flashlight, you know, the perk activates, obviously. I mean, it's a perk. It needs a way to activate. Uh, when you are training a flashlight, you have 50% haste when you success for Why the killer? They also gain 20% hindered for 6 seconds. So when you blind the killer, they the killer themselves get 20% hindered. Kind of dumb. Uh, it's so it's so powerful. Uh, this effect cannot stack with itself, then the perk goes on cooldown. So basically after you use it once, it'll it's just on cooldown. For 80, 70, 60 seconds. Boom Illumination, which I still like. I don't, which I still like a lot. Press and hold the ability button one near a dull or hex totem. To bless it and create a binge I'm sorry, I forgot where I was for a second. Soft. Chimes ring out in a 24 meter range. I'm pretty sure all the boon totems does that, but whatever. Uh, survivors inside your boon totems range. At least this one does. See the aura of all chests and all generators in blue. If you have a limp boon totem, you can <laughs> 6 8 10 faster. You can only bless one totem at a time. Oh, of course, Boom Perks right up on your Boom Tome. Yeah, so I don't know if Boom Illumination is going to be like what brings Boom Tomes back, because once Boom Circle Fueling finally got killed, like finally got killed, um, when they, which was when they added the caveat that you can no longer heal yourself. People used it a bit after that, but it slowly faded away, and now you, and now I have I haven't seen it once since, you know, in so long. I haven't seen Boon Tone, like any Boon Tones at all since, you know, that one got killed, so. So I don't know if Boon Illumination will be like what brings Boon Tones back. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't, but I still, personally, I really like it. And Deadline, which is also very solid. Which is this perk activates when you are injured. Skill checks appear six to eight times percent more frequently when repairing or healing and appears in random places. So basically, even though you get skill because you get skill checks more often, they appear randomly. Um, I believe it works somewhat similarly to having madness from uh, to having you know madness from the doctor. Obviously, not fully like that, but that is. A decent way to describe it, I guess. And then, um, and then the penalty for missing the skill checks is reduced by 50%. So you get more skill checks, and your penalty for failing them is reduced. So it's very solid. But that's only if you're injured and you have to break what. Uh, killer update the hillbilly. He basically got a full on rework, which is pretty crazy. Um, killer power, press and hold the power button to break into a chainsaw sprint. Survivor said during the chainsaw sprint or pull into the dying state. Revving the chainsaw and spritzing with the chainsaw each cause the overdrive meter to increase. The meter decreases when the chainsaw is not in use. When the meter is full, the chainsaw goes into overdrive. Base changes. So these base changes are on hillbilly basically. If you're just walking around this hillbilly, you having sort of like ripping up your chainsaw, you'll have these phase changes. If you're using just a normal chainsaw, you haven't filled up your meter much yet, you'll have these. And if you are in overdrive, you'll have these. Um, because they're base changes, they're just a part of his how he works normally. So they increase the chainsaw sprint movement speed to 10.2 meters a second with 9.2 meters a second. They decrease the chainsaw. Um, 
hit cooldown to 2.7 seconds was 3 seconds, decrease the chainsaw miss cooldown to 1.5 seconds was 3 seconds, increase movement speed during the chainsaw miss cooldown to 2.3 meters a second was 1.3 meters a second, which is a very good change. So far, like all the ones that I read so far are very solid. Uh, decreases the size of the chainsaw's collision to improve navigation during a chainsaw uh, sprint, which in my opinion, that's the biggest one. Um, I harped on that a lot in my original attempt of making this video, because basically what that means is when you do a chainsaw sprint, because sometimes when you go for a chainsaw sprint, you'll kind of hit something to the side of you a little bit or whatever and whatnot, sometimes. So, because they decreased the size of that collision zone, you can now navigate with it way better. It, you, right, you now don't have to worry about that as much. And with all the other changes, like on top of that one, which I think is very good and would have been an amazing base change if that was the only one. Um, but you add all these other really solid base changes and Hillbilly especially if you know how to use hillbilly correctly hillbilly is probably one of the most terrifying killers in the game right now nurse is still by far the best blight is still absolutely amazing i'm still the only person who would argue chucky is better than nurse but that's just me um but chucky is also again one of the best um there's quite a, uh, unfortunately, Sadako has fallen from grace. I hopefully we'll hear um, something about her soon because I know a lot of people were upset. And I made a, I, I did react to that change that people were upset about with her. I believe, just going off of my original attempt at this, I believe she's slightly different than that now, but. Fully. But yeah, again, the decrease in the size of the chainsaw's collision is already was already a huge base change for me when I first read that. Sorry, I went on tangent there. Disconnected the chainsaw sensitivity from controller sensitivity. I still don't know what that means. I'm I I know they were harping up that 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 was like a good change and stuff, and I'm not saying it's not. I just don't really understand what that means I guess so I guess based off of how you're pe I don't really understand it if you guys think you have a good way to uh, explain that to me let me know in the comment section below but it's good that it's here you know what I mean it's nice it's good that we have these good base changes for Billy baseline sensitivity was set to 100% of the controller sensitivity okay so I guess that's a bit more information on that. Um, and then of course the special state overdrive. Well, in overdrive, the chainsaws enhanced, chainsaw charge and sprint speeds are increased. The chainsaw sprint cooldowns are reduced in overdrive. Last for 20 seconds, base overdrive stats. So these are the base overdrive stats. So once you hit over, so once you hit overdrive, you'll have these three stats. You'll have a chainsaw charge speed increased by five percent. You'll have a chainsaw sprint movement speed increased to thirteen meters a second, which is even higher than his base one uh, by a little bit. And then his chainsaw cooldowns reduced by ten percent. So his chainsaw um, cools down way um, is reduced way more. He's even faster, and his charge speed is increased even more add-ons this is where this is where the um, first attempt really got long the first attempt was 50 something minutes i'd like for um, attempt number two to not be as long because quite frankly i've already read most of these and i'm hoping this doesn't have any issues Anyways, uh, add-on. So the grease throttle was to jump out of the air filter, decrease recovery time after using the chainsaw by 8%, which is a new functionality. The counterweight counterweight was heavy clutch, decrease the chainsaw sprint initial turn rate by 70%, new functionality. Cracked primer bulb was speed limiter, survivor suit with the chainsaw are damaged for a single health state. Increase overdrive generate Coolers, overdrive generation by 15% of functionality. So basically, um, 
so you know all of these are of course going to do different things that are going to be helpful um they really wanted billy to have as many add-ons that were um enticing as possible so that's why they did all this i don't know if it was related to billy but i i didn't watch the video but i saw a video of um thumbnail and title of an of it was a video from a starba um and it, i what the title was something like why does behavior keep adding add useless add-ons or something like that but i mean again that's his opinion all all add-ons are useful to an extent and um and again if you like and if the yeah, if whatever add-ons he was talking about you enjoy keep using them because they aren't useless they're still helpful they still you know they're still good they're still helpful um they might not be as good as others but they're not useless so i don't really un so i'm not entirely sure what add-on he was talking about but anyways uh, the steel tail boots, which decreases recovery time after hanging an object with the chainsaw by 10%, was 12%. Um, the grind chains was big buckle. From my understanding, the big grind chains doesn't actually tell you, like, um, like, I believe it's in-game description is a little bit wrong, so that's fun. Um, but basically, survivors hit with the chainsaw suffer from the mangled and heavier status effects until fully healed, which is a new functionality. It adds boots, which increases the chainsaw sprint turn rate by 30%, which was 28%. The clogged intake, which was death engraving. Death engravings increases overdrive duration by 15%, new functionality. The off brand motor oil, which increases overdrive generation by 50%, which is a new functionality. The thermal casing was punctured muffler which decreases the speed at which heat dissipates when not using the chainsaw by 20% new functionality the Thompson's I'm not sure why it wasn't really moving there we go okay that was I, that was weird it was like delayed or something <laughs> for a second then it went back to normal that, that was weird uh, the Thompson's mix which was black grease Decreases recovery time after using the chainsaw by 12%, which is a new functionality. The iridescent engravings, which was doom engravings. From my understanding, this was, I believe, a purple add-on that be because they completely reworked Billy, they then moved it up to be an iridescent. So they changed, so one, one of his old iridescents is no longer iridescent and got replaced by this one. I believe, um, so which is interesting. I forget which one this technically replaces like if you look at Billy in game and like see the order of his iridescence like compare his old ones to you know his new ones I forget which one this like replaces um but anyways it increases chainsaw sprint movement speed by 20% so you're even faster with your chainsaw and it increases the required time required to charge the chainsaw by 12% which is a new functionality rarity so that's kind of the trade-off. Yes, you're faster with the chainsaw if you use the iridescent add-on, but now it takes longer to charge up your chainsaw. Also, it's high rarity, so you're not gonna be able to get it as easily as, say, the brown add-ons or, you know, whatnot. Anyways, the uh, ragged engine, which was leafy mash, decreases the speed at which overdrive dissipates when not using the chainsaw by 30%, new functionality. Low kickback chains decreases recovery time after hitting an object with the chainsaw by 50%. Worst way 8%. Baby, 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 baby. Anyways, um, this guarded ill filter was mother's helpers. Increases the time it takes before overdrive starts dissipating by 20% new functionality. The high speed eye board scale was big house glove. Increases the time takes before overdrive starts dissipating by 30% new functionality. Spiked boots increases the chainsaw speed sprint turn rate by 45% was 44% and removed functionality. Um, I don't I believe the functionality that was removed if I'm remembering this correctly became part of his base kit. So they just took it off. I don't, but I could be wrong. 
tuned the carburetor, didn't get changed at all, except they just changed, except they changed rarity to ultra rare. So the tuned carburetor and the iridescent, what was it, the iridescent in, in, uh, engravings or whatever are, his, are now his new iridescence. And then the Apex muffler, which again got changed rarity to very rare. So the Apex muffler and the tuned carburetor basically switch places. And then I believe the and then the iridescent brick, I believe was his other one, got replaced with the iridescent engravings, basically. Okay. Cause like these aren't different. Like the tin carburetor and the Apex Mofo aren't different at all. They they just changed their rarity. Which is fine. And then the filthy slipper oh yeah, and then the filthy slippers, which was the iridescent brick. I forgot that they completely changed it to be slippers from a brick. Which is after maintaining a chainsaw sprint for two seconds, grants undetectable into the chainsaw sprint ads, which is a new functionality in rarity. So they basically changed, you know, they changed its how it functions and they changed its rarity. But yeah, apparently filthy slippers also isn't um, doesn't tell you right now, doesn't tell it like in-game, the in-game description for it is messed up. Um, miscellaneous, which is added a new loading tip regarding overdrive meter, added new score events when using the chainsaw. So there's curve, which is when turning a minimum of 80 degrees within one second to use the chainsaw. Curve hit, which is when hitting a survivor with the chainsaw within two seconds of getting the curve score event. Overdrive, which is when overdrive triggers. Overdrive hit, which is when you hit a survivor <laughs> with the, you know, while, while in overdrive. Uh, sprinter, which is performing a chainsaw sprint that's four seconds or longer sprint hit which is of course hanging survivor with the chainsaw after traveling more than 32 meters killer update the unreal aka sodico uh the manifestation well the manifested uh sodico can gain bloodlust as usual that was something they changed uh during the p2b they allowed her to keep bloodlust even when the game manifested and uh and Sadako can also can enter chase as just normally, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then while demanifested blood while demanifesting, you no longer lose blood loss. And then they increase the demanifested state of invisibility duration from one to one point two seconds because a lot of people liked it, so they just increased the seconds at last by a little bit. Uh, the killer power, which is teleport cooldown from previous update removed. Um, the reason that was there was because they changed how her condemned work. So they um, did that caveat because they, because you know, they were like, this might be a little too powerful if we don't change this. So, uh, condemned gained from teleports increased to one to one full stack new power meter so basically she has the new power meter so if the um so it resets on teleport and changes automatically afterwards and that and it takes 10 seconds if the power meter is 98 percent or more when teleporting the teleport applies condensed to survivors within 10 meters of the tv where sonico projected or any other power TVs. If the power meter is less than 90%, no condense is applied. From my understanding, that, you know, that part of the last um, update that I read is a big reason why Sonica was considered to be the worst killer in the game if that goes live. And people were very, fr um, very nervous. Behavior in that same post, they were proud of it. They were proud of that Sonica change, and all of the fans got pissed about it. So it sounds so. From my understanding, I believe it kind. Of, just reading it, if it does work the same, they really did try to hide it, <laughs> because um, they worded everything a little differently and whatnot. So if it does work the same as you know as it was going to, you know, from the last update, they really wanted to hide that fact. But if, but, it, but if it, but again, if, but if it works a little differently, then hopefully, um, they did a good job fixing that problem a lot of people had. Um, and then of course the power TV, so they now have a VFX, which show, which show, 
um, showing range at all times when powered. And then they have, and then they are revealed to survivors within 16 meters. And then of course, hooking a survivor locks up the two sacks of condemned, and that applies for every hook action. And you cannot remove those stacks. They, they're just like completely like locked. Like there's zero way to remove those once you get hooked, and those are locked. And then of course the PHS taste, which tastes no longer gain protection from getting condemned while holding them. Survivors no longer gain condemned. If hit when holding a taste, survivors no longer lose their taste on attack. Survivors must bring their taste to the per CV, highlight in yellow. Retrieving a tape now takes one second plus two. And of course inserting a tape in a TV now takes one second plus two. So yeah, they just kind of changed how Sonic's power worked a little bit and whatnot. And of course, her add-ons, so you have videotape copy, which increases the range of survivors gain condemned from production by 2 meters to functionality. Rekha's watch increases the invisibility duration while demanifested by 25% was 33%. Ring drawing when hooking a survivor carrying a tape, other survivors gain one condemned stack in functionality. Uh, tape editing deck. Each survivor starts the trial with the tape in their possession and their target TV is the furthest from their location, no change. Survivors that insert their tapes are revealed for 6 seconds in the functionality, so they just added something on top of it. They just added being able to see a, you know, a survivor who inserts their tape. And then the iridescent videotape, which projection does not turn off TVs and does not apply condensed, which is a new functionality. And TV is turned off by survivors, take 20% longer to turn back on the functionality. So the iridescent videotape got basically seemingly completely changed because they added two new functions to it. I don't know if that's in addition to the old ones, but there's a, it at least has to do with functions. Uh, QR add-on updates the Blight. A lot of people have been wanting Blight to get touched for years and we're getting frustrated. I suck as Blight, so... For me, it was just if I saw if I if I saw Bly was in the trial, I knew we were screwed, and sure enough, we were screwed, um, because it's Bly, the second best go in the game. Again, the beta bull was chunky. The, the beta bull is arguably the best. I say arguably because I'm the only person who's arguing that point, but that's besides the point. Uh, but yeah, from what I remember from my first attempt, Bly, they sounded solid. Um, so, let me read to you the Blight changes. Blighted Rat, which was one of his two best add-ons, and yet they had put both of his, like, what were considered his two best, um, right at the start. They, I, I, I don't know if they were the two best, but they were at least two of the best. These are, these were used a lot with, uh, good Blight mains before they obviously did this update. Uh, so the Blight Rat... Increases rush speed by 2% for each consecutive rush that was 4%. And from my understanding, 4% was pretty broken because your speed is even faster. And then the Blight Crow, which increases rush speed by 3% for each consecutive rush, was 6%. So you combine that 6%, that 4%, and it was ridiculous. So they just cut, so they cut it completely in half to try to, you know, not make those busted. And then the Adrenaline Vial, which increases maximum rush tokens by 2, increases ma uh, maximum rush look angle by 20 degrees, increases rush speed by 5%, and they adjust the functionality of it. The Alchemist Ring increases rush duration by 20% for each consecutive rush, which is a new functionality. Compounds for the free. Um, increases rush turn rate by 11% for each consecutive rush. The trial is always 3 meters up to a maximum of 33%, which is a new functionality. Also, compound 43 is another add-on that does not, um, in-game description is not what it's supposed to be. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse stuttering. I'm like moving it how I normally move my mouse. And it's just, and it, okay, that was weird. Yeah, see, this is what I was trying to like, this is the speed I'm used to it being and whatnot. So I don't know why I was like stuttering like that, that was weird. I'm having a lot of mouse problems um, today. Um, I, I wonder if I have to get, I wonder if I'll need a new battery for my mouse soon. If I do, that's fine, but yeah, it's, it just kind of sucks. It's, uh, 
because I was having no problems with it uh, today. Uh, well, until now, of course. So, so maybe I'm just doing. So maybe I'm just doing something weird with it. It doesn't matter. Anyways, the error doesn't blight tag, which enables rush to be performed without spending tokens. Basically, the error doesn't blight tag. Um, just because of enabling the you know the without spending token thing, yeah. You uh, the iridescent blight tag is literally uh, infinite rush, but there's some caveat. But there's some uh, to make that not busted as hell. Um, let me read to you the rest of it. So the rush bonuses are capped after frequency the brushes. So if you just keep using it, you won't get any more of the rush benefits uh, once you do it three times. You're just kind of stuck in that regards. The Blighted Corruption goes on cooldown for 20 seconds, which is your power. Um, it goes on a 20 second cooldown after a lethal rush attack, missing a slam, or breaking a pallet with Blighted Corruption. So before, um, because before it, um, it was just hitting. It was just landing a lethal rush attack, but now they added, of course, some other caveats to it to make it not bust any of course, new functionality. Uh, so the perk updates are Quick Gambit, which um, desperately needed a update. So it's when you are when you are chased by the kill RC auras of gens within 36 meters. Survivors working on the highlight generators re cut receives. A six, seven, eight percent speed boost to the repair action and functionality. Um, so basically, before and that was how it originally worked, except it was twenty-four meters. They increased the amount of meters and cut the top um, bonuses you got by half. People didn't like that because they were like, "Well, because people didn't really." Pe Me and pretty much everyone else was like, "This sounds." still useless because even though your like meter is higher you're not get you're not able to give us much of a repair speed and kind of based on how they change generators to deal with um free genning to finally deal with free genning and to also um get rid of uh, tapping gen tapping you kind of need all the help you can get here so the fact that they updated so they reverted a quick gambit's repair speeds to their original amount so it's basically the exact same as how it was, except you have an increased uh, distance you can be away from the, the your friend of the gen. So that's pretty good. And, um, so say the best for last, which was, from what I remember, I was, I I was like the only person who enjoyed the change. I know, uh, I haven't watched the video, but I but I know uh, Starva did not like it. Um, you become so basically save the best for last. You become obsessed with one survivor, earn a token for each successful basic attack that is not dealt to the obsession. Each token grants a stackable four percent, was five percent, but they decreased that because this perk has been pretty good for a while. Um, decrease successful basic attack cooldown. Uh, you can earn up to six, seven, eight tokens. Was just eight tokens flat out. But now um, it's only eight tokens if it's purple. And then when hitting the obsession with a basic attack or special attack with two tokens, before I believe it was just. I don't know if it was always two tokens, but the way they worded a, one of the earlier per, uh, like updates things on Steam, they kind of worded it that like that's a new thing. Uh, you cannot. Gain tokens as long as the obsession is sacrificed or killed, and they of course adjusted the damage sources and tokens test because they were finding that the obsessions would just um, bleed out to death and die as like pretty much as early as they could, so that way their other the other survivors won't have to deal with save the best for the last. So they changed how it were, um, how you make it, so how you like lose tokens and whatnot to deal with that. And then uh, we have Grim Embrace, 
which is each time a survivor is selected for the first time, gain a token. Then when you have a six, then when you leave a sixteen meter range of that hook, all generators are blocked for nine, ten, twelve. To, sorry, eight, ten, twelve seconds. They push out. I'll say nine, ten, twelve, and make a whole lot of sense. Upon reaching four tokens, when you leave the sixteen meter range of that hook, the NT instead blocks all generators for forty seconds. 40 seconds, so that's even more. The obsessions or is revealed to you for six seconds increases time, increased times added proximity clause. Then this perk deactivates. So, honestly, now, of course, events, modifiers, lights out will be active from February 7th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Eastern to February 14th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Eastern. And they added a modifier lights out event tome will also open while it's active so that won't be too much longer after this video uh, uploads that uh, that will be available maps so we have mount ormond updates we made some changes to mount ormond the layout and main building are staying the same but we decided to address the fact that the front of the building representing an entrance has had no gameplay or Interesting loop if it, it was a big pile of rocks. I'm sorry I'm having such a tough time reading this uh, right now. I apologize. And not much else. So we went up so we went updated the gameplay to make it more fluid and fitting with the loops and to actually add a gameplay. The art team went through as well to make things look nice. In the back of the building, we had a couple of tiles that were simple loops, so that didn't have interesting gameplay. We updated this and improved the quality there as well. Bug fixes archives. Yeah, I remember once I got to this part in a tenth one, I, God, I just, just reading these things, especially when they're, when they're good. Updates like this, it just takes so long. So, um, I'm already yearning for, you know, it's at number like one end of the being, I think. Um, so that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I just, you know, I'm just reacting to it. It's it's a pretty solid update, all things considered. You know, they, of course, had bug fixes to make sure that the game runs as smoothly as possible. You know, and then, like, of course, the more major changes were also, um, are also pretty good so far. But yeah, but, so they fixed an issue where the archives challenges could be completed when playing tutorial bot matches, fix an issue where the memory shard visual effects would not stop drawing when in spectator mode, fix an issue where the mem challenge descriptions of core memory straight thoughts were inconsistent with other core memory challenges. Fix an issue with the Tone 17 back to back challenge for getting unintended progress from non consecutive skill checks. That is how me and Orange finished that challenge. Was that issue that is now gone. So that's kind of funny. Fix an issue where the a stunning display challenge would not gain progress after wiggling free from the gorgeous grass. Fix an issue where the That's Rude challenge would not gain progress when pointing at the killer within five seconds of the premonition per guy. If what for me all of this, they have the word five, but then they have the number five in parentheses right next to it. And I was just like, just pick one or the other behavior. Like, okay. Um, the Undying Influence Challenge now properly tracks totems ignited by the Hex Plaything perk. The Plot Twist perk no longer gives progress towards the Killer Challenge Knockout Remix. The That's Rude Challenge now correctly gains progress when pointing towards the killer after activating the Premonition perk. So, yeah, you know, just getting those black fixes done so the challenges work as they intended them to. Audio fix issues that cost the foreignness of X from the free generator system to be too loud. And, of course, reduce the Hillbase Chainsaw volume. Bots. Bots no longer self-heal immediately after being unhooked. They will first try to get killed by a person that got the unhook. Bots now have different priorities between different self interactions, self men being the highest priority, and self care being the lowest priority. Bots no longer enter an infinite loop when injured and holding a medkit and a special item. 
but self healing is now more consistent. They correct what you see the intent interaction as possible while moving. Players can now signal a bot for their attention by either using the come here email or by teabagging unless they have something urgent, they'll drop what they're doing and heal the players or let themselves get healed. I love how behavior did that because that is literally how we how us survivors communicate. We either do come here or we're just teabagging or we're just spamming the crouch button for this. So I'm very happy that so it's very nice that the boss now respond to uh, our language. It's pretty great. Bots now change the priority of their interactions when they are targeting a specific interaction. When bots drop their flashbang to grab and use the spray or serum, they will immediately pick back up their flashbang once they're done healing themselves. Bots don't like or stop in front of certain vaults. And of course characters. So the knight can no longer summon many guards at the same time and vaulting a window, which I believe is why he was disabled. I don't know about his perk over the height though. I don't know if that ever gets mentioned. In here I honestly can't remember, but but if not, again, if you know why I was disabled, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear why. Um Fix an issue caused the pebble throw animation for male survivors to be misaligned with the camera's orientation when using the diversion perk. Fix an issue that caused struggling survivors to clip outside of the dumb Gordon's arm. Fix an issue that caused Nancy's red plaid skirt to, cl to clips. I don't know why you put an S off your clip, but okay, the clips into her leg while running in the tally screen. From my understanding, Nancy's red plaid skirt is from a one of her outfits. Also love Nancy and her outfits, so I'm hoping to, you know, I'm kind of prioritizing uh, the Stranger Things characters' outfits right now, just because I never got to have their outfits before. And I'm pleased to say that I do have a Nancy outfit, and I very much, and I will definitely use it in some videos on this game. Uh, the screen no longer turns black for spectators after the Cenobite, aka Pinhead, teleports to the landing configuration. Pretty solid there. Well, the night change is obviously the biggest one, but still. Uh, environment slash mass. Fix an issue in the storm of wreckage where the nurse will get stuck in the main building. Yeah, get, fu uh, get fucked, nurse. Um, nurse has gotten stuck a couple times now and, uh, you know, these, like, update videos that I do where, like, I read stuff. There's been, like, I want to say three or four times now where, and, of course, I'm including this one that I just read, where there's, we got stuck somehow. I think one of them, she got stuck, like, outside of the map or something weird. It was something weird. And it's just, like, behavior at this point, like, like, I got a little... I don't know what's going on with the nurse anymore, but... It's also not... Good. There's an issue in Mount Mormont where a collision would block the guards. Fix an issue in the Quotes' Prentice where players could walk on the visually inaccessible ramp. Fix an issue... In Mount Ormond, where the debris would prevent the mastermind from moving properly, fix an issue in the underground complex where the killers could not drop down a hole in the rift room, and of course, fix an issue in the underground complex where the knights guards are unable to climb the stairs. Perks. Fix an issue where players would end up with unleveled perks if they've leveled it in the lobby without opening the loadout menu before loading into a trial. Survivors of Quotes with the Visionary perk will see the aura of the claws on the generator blocked by the Karat Intervention perk. I don't know if that's intentional. Well, that's intentional now, at least. Um, I, but I still feel it. Um, but yeah, that Visionary perk up, uh, update is pretty, pretty solid. Um, it's just nice being able to see those, the Karat Intervention, you know, like, claws on the gents now. That's it. Um, 
was that UI, right? Yeah, UI. Fix an issue where the controller disconnected pop up does not appear when the controller is disconnected. Fix an issue where a pop up message displays an option to buy Oryx House when the item cannot be purchased by Oryx House. Fix an issue where the menu buttons when selecting a survivor appear too small in the custom game lobby. Fix an issue where the reward node status was not updated when collecting it. Fix an issue where F. SR sharpness appears 1% lower when reopening the option after increasing. I still don't know how you would notice a 1% difference. Also, don't really know what that is. Like, what an FSR sharpness is. I don't know. But again, I'm kind of. At least it's fixed. So we don't have to worry about it now. Fix an issue where character info can be opened during the offering screen. I don't know what's going on. What's, what's happening today? I'm like, I can't tell if I'm getting attacked, but like my face, like my face has something on it, and I keep like feeling different things on it. Yeah, that happened all of a sudden. That was weird. Hopefully, I got it. Uh, fix an issue that caused the hook big net to remain visible on screen in smaller scale while survivors were being sacrificed. Fix an issue that caused survivors to be sacrificed a little before the end game collapses. Progression bar became empty. Um, fix an issue that caused the blood rush and blood prompt to flicker when looking up. Fix an issue that caused the Demogorgon's open portal bar to remain white while quit with the red tail add on. Nope. They fixed my nose. God damn. Or my face in general. God damn it. What is happening today? Um. Uh, first initially cost for us to be sacrificed a little before the ending clause's progression bar became empty. Fix an issue cost blades rush input the flicker when looking up. Fix an issue cost the Demogorgon's open portal bar to remain white when it clips with the rat tail add-on. Fix an issue that caused the progress bar of nearby generous totems or chests. Not to be displayed when you clip the key or map. Fix an issue where some tooltips and Hot bot blood out had their had their header off screen. Uh, miscellaneous fix an issue where players could be stuck in a loop loading when attending start trying to custom game with six players. Fixes from PTB. From my from what I remember, we finally made it to the end. <laughs> this is the last like big section. This video might actually be longer than my first attempt. And I tried to make this shorter. I don't know how that happens. Um, well, I wasn't say trying to make it shorter, but like, I didn't ramble. Like, um, there were parts in the first video where I like rambled a lot. And then this video, I didn't ramble on them. But I guess I still rambled too much. I apologize. Fixes from PTB characters. The cannibals, aka Bubba. 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 I love Bubba. Anyways. A uh, speed limiter add on correctly gives bonus blood points for the chance I hit score event. The hillbilly's movement speed no longer increases when colliding with an asset during a chainsaw sprint, just as overdrive. Oh. Over, override activates. So, is that really override? I thought it was overdrive. You'll never catch me, crabs. Not when I. Not when I shift into maximum overdrive. Here you are. Fix an issue that caused some animations to be missing for female survivors when repairing one side of a generator. The undetectable status effect is properly granted when playing as the bite with both the iridescent blight tag and big astronaut add ons equipped. 
the Unreal, aka Sadako, can no longer turn invisible when you didn't know where the hide perk. So maybe that's maybe that's why I know where the hide got disabled. I don't know. Killer instinct is not properly shown when the twins Victor is dormant close to his and lockers. FOV players can now can no longer bypass the minimum and maximum FOV by aiming the in the in all any files. I don't know. I can't tell if it's an I at the end or an L. The FOV setting is correctly set between sessions. The restore default spawn correctly resets the FOV setting. Generators. The minimum repair indicator of the stop regression no longer appears in generator setting and not regressing. The minimum repair indicator no longer appears in the if the generator regression is stopped by something other than repairing the generator, such as when the hex room totem is cleansed. Eruption no longer applies its effects if the generator is not damaged because of the already cured the maximum number of regression events. Missing the overcharged skill check no longer causes the generators no repair progress to regress. Generators that are blocked after having cured the maximum number of regression events can no longer be regressed by the Legion's fuming mixtape add on. Miscellaneous survivors can no longer become invisible when they arrive with the locker at the same time as another character. So characters may no longer get pushed when interacting with the locker at the same time as another character. Uh, perks. The chest auras are revealed revealed by the boom. Illumination perk are now hidden when affected by the blindness status effect. Champion of light perk no longer applies to hinder status effects to the killer when blinded by something other than a flashlight. The Shadow Bloom perk icon now only lights up when the perk is active. The Save the Best for the Last perk no longer sometimes fails to lose tokens when hitting the obsession when other obsession perks are equipped. Fixing the issue that may cause players to become desynced when the de de decisive strike perk was triggered at the same time the killer was stunned by another way. The plot twist perk icon is no longer lit up when the survivor is healthy. X for the hunt perk now has the proper number of tokens when reignited by the hex and dying perk. The endurance status effect granted by the we're gonna live forever perk now counts towards the uh, humanitarian achievement. No issues. The daily rituals button is unresponsive when coming to the main menu from the archives of a killer lobby. This can be fixed by visiting any other menus and coming back to the main menu. The daily rituals button is also accessible in any lobby or tally. And now we've read it all. So they didn't mention this, but um, me and Orange, well, Orange on my account, um, on my, you know, device, whatnot, he, um, he discovered a problem with either the game or with either my game or a bug in general. Um, and I ran into it once as well. Um, it's a bug where if you play against Chucky, Sometimes when you get on the hook, you are stuck. Or what well, let me explain. So some you're you can't move. So you'll be standing in front of the hook and you can like move side to side but you can't actually walk or go anywhere until Chucky hits you. And I really, really hope that that gets fixed sometime soon because it is a very big problem to just not be able to like move all of a sudden. And it's very frustrating and very, very annoying. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. That ended up being, um, that I believe ended up being longer than attempt number one. I do apologize for that, for anyone who cared. Um, I, not, um, I apologize for rambling way too long, but at least I finally filmed the video. Had and hopefully I didn't have any. Hopefully, won't have any issues and have to do this a third time. Hopefully, we'll be done right here, um, which will be good because that means I won't have to worry about this video, uh, getting this filmed and uploaded anymore. But yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the bell, or share the video, ring the bell, sorry. Uh, do all the agrophic garbage, as it said a lot, and it means a lot to us. Um, 
uh, there's a lot more video. Um, Orange's computer is still broken, so it's still just me, you know, just be me for probably a while. Um, so I'm doing what I can to try to make videos for you guys. I know um, I get a lot of complaints whenever I make a video, so I am a little wary um, when I do, but hopefully um, you guys understand my problems. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.